Global Ethics Corner from the Carnegie Council. Do laws that make it a crime to deny the existence of genocide help to lessen the chances of renewed conflict? Or do they stifle freedom of speech and risk eliminating political dissent? These are the questions currently being debated in Rwanda. The recent trial of Victoire Ingabir, a staunch government critic, has drawn attention to a controversial law that criminalizes what it calls genocide ideology. Passed in 2008, the law places hefty fines and prison sentences on a wide range of alleged transgressions. These span the gamut from incitement of hatred and the denial of genocide to statements that poke fun at genocidal actions. Advocates of the law argue that it represents a genuine effort to deal with the past. They accuse individuals like Ingabir of denying the extent of the tragedy inflicted upon Rwanda's Tutsi minority. By drawing attention to Hutu victims, they say Ingabir and others fuel ethnic divisions. Critics make a different case. They say the law's vague terminology can lead to censorship and offers the government too much leeway in selecting potential transgressors. Rather than redress the past, they say it serves as a legal instrument for an authoritarian government bent on eliminating opposition. The Ingabir trial is a case in point. Far from denying genocide, critics say Ingabir drew attention to the complexity of the genocide, which resulted in both Tutsi and Hutu victims. By arresting Ingabir, the government was not dealing with the past. It was eliminating its most credible opponent. As Ingabir's trial gets underway, what is your take on Rwanda's ideology law? Does it help to stem genocide, or is it a veiled attempt to eliminate opposition? How do you distinguish between laws that deal with the past and laws that subvert a democratic future. This is Terence Hurley from the Carnegie Council. Made possible by the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs. Post a comment at www.carnegiecouncil.org.